Today, we talk about a terrible person. A person who has not only used every opportunity to misuse their platform, but to shame the black community. Uh, a sir. person so awful sir. that... What? Sorry. Uh, it's the wrong script. That's, that's the wrong script. That's, that's the... That's the Candace Owens script. This this is the little Nas script, right? Yeah. Appreciate that. <laughs> Take 73. My name's Andre. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend, your mother, your father, your parole officer, anybody that's willing to listen to the good word. In today's video, I wanna answer a question, a question that frankly, I already know the answer to because this is my video, my channel, and, and, and a dictatorship. I wanna analyze and give you my thoughts on why the public perception of Little Nas X turned on its head so quickly. A series of events that stemmed all the way from the popularity of Old Town Road in 2019 to right now, 2021, with the new release of Industry Baby, and Little Nas X seeming to push our mind and our tolerance to the edge relentlessly. If you would have asked anyone with a working knowledge of pop culture or the newest dances or the newest apps or the newest songs in May of 2019, what their perception of Little Nas X was, it probably would have went like, yo, that's dope, bro. Like that's dope. I love what he's doing, man. That song is amazing, man. Like <laughs> in contrast, if you ask anyone today what their perception of Little Nas X is, there's a 50-50 chance that the re response would be, you know, I just, you know, the music's great and I just feel like he's doing entirely too much. Like, just why? What happened to the child-friendly music? What happened to the horses in the back? But why is that? The answer to that question is very simple. It lies in the heteronormative standards of society the intersectionalities of identities and the hypocrisy of everyone who consumes any type of mainstream secular music. Someone bring the pastor in here, I got a word. So if we look at a, a rough timeline, Little Nas X released Old Town Road in 2019, which was followed up by the release of his debut EP, Seven, which was of course headlined by Old Town Road and Billy Ray Cyrus, and a song that was sneakily thrown in at the end of the EP called Closure slash You Like. And Lil Nas X during the rollout of this EP released a tweet that told us to pay close attention to not only the lyrics of that song, but the cover art for the EP as a whole, which then led to him publicly coming out as gay. Nothing wrong with that, which I thought was pretty cool. Live in your truth, Black King. But the public did not. Then we saw where he began to turn the tide of his artistic identity. And then in March of 2021, everything changed. Lil Nas released a song called Martero slash Call Me By Your Name, which was which was pretty much uh, his gay anthem, pretty much. But the song is not what caught people's attention. It was the music video. It was him descending into hell on a stripper pole to then give an erotic Tuesday night strip club lap dance to the devil. And America was in a collective uproar. What about the children? My kid plays on an iPad all day. What if in between Coco Melon episodes, he stumbles upon Montero? And when I say collective, I mean collective. The music video, Call Me By Your Name, is currently sitting at 1 million dislikes on YouTube. And this was the symbolic turning of the tide of Lil Nas X, turning from us loving him from Old Town Road to us hating him for Montero. People blaming on the gay agenda, the Illuminati, blah, 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 blah. I thought that this was a stark representation of the, of the hypocrisy that we operate with when consuming music and pop culture, which goes hand in hand with the misogynoir and the hypocrisy that we operate with when we consume, when we consume hip hop as a whole, which is a male dominated space. We can look back at last summer, Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B released WAP and Republicans were up in arms. People were up in arms at these beautiful black women shaking their on the timeline. Concerned about the wrong things, I might add. But the biggest issue that people had with the release of Montero was the children, respectability, politics, and all of that good stuff. 
And my thing is, Lil Nas X never told us that he was a children's artist. Have you actually read the lyrics to Old Town Road? Riding on a tractor, lean all in my bladder. Cheated on my baby, you can go and ask her. My life is a movie, bull riding in boobies, bull riding in boobies. Lil Nas X actually did an interview with one of my favorite YouTubers, Zach Campbell, where he actually broke down the lyrics to Montero, Call Me By Your Name. And the video was actually a social commentary and he, and in my opinion, it was bait that it was it was bait for society and society took the bait. Society is willing to consume things as long as it does not open the door for liberation for black women and queer people, mostly black queer people. It leads to discussions of the heteronormative standards that we operate with in society. And back to that word, hypocrisy. If we look at the history of hip hop going all the way back to the 1970s and 80s, hip hop is really, most of our favorite hip hop artists have built their careers on, on insidious, dastardly, and vile substance and content. I find the open and social crucifixion of Lil Nas X to just be kind of tasteless. Because if we're gonna crucify him for the content of his music, then we have to crucify all of the other people that we listen to and give our money, dollars, pennies, and streams every single day. Eminem built his entire career on music that discusses abusing women. Three, five, four, four. I think I smell the scent of a placenta. Police! 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 Help! Police! Help! Lil Wayne shot to the top of the charts in 2008 with a song called Lollipop. Call me. So I can make it just if I Excuse me? Excuse me? <laughs> I can just pick out a random Kanye song with my eyes closed and we can get there. Now if I fuck this model and she just bleached her asshole. What do you mean by that? And it doesn't stop with rap and hip hop. It's so, is the music of today and the past corrupting our children and our youth? No, it's not. Our attitudes, beliefs, and how we operate in society are corrupting our children. They're impacting the way that we teach them, they're impacting the way that we parent them, and in turn, it's impacting the way that they go into adulthood and raise that next generation. I think Lil Nas X, unfortunately, has been a great example of how we view marginalized people in our society. Like I said, it all has to deal with intersectionalities. Laws that improve women's rights are, are going to help a young, able-bodied, straight white woman, but aren't going to fully help that older, disabled, gay black woman. Just like Lil Nas X has identities that contribute to his marginalization, being a black man and being a gay black man. Our identities don't simply exist in a vacuum, but together, if that makes sense. And lastly, I'll leave you with this. You can't want freedom for black people until you want freedom for all black people. Yes, sir! This nigga spitting! Damn, nigga! Raise your children.